May the Holy Spirit help you to show the way in which you can proclaim the good news about Jesus. Our sermon text for this morning is the last verses of the first scripture lesson that we heard this morning. Listen once again to just these verses. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Dear fellow believers, what is the best news you have ever heard? I want you to take a moment and think about what the best news has been for you personally. Was it when your boyfriend asked you to marry him? Was it when you found out that you were expecting your first child? Was it when you were able to buy your first house? Was it when you got that job that you had been working so hard for? Was it when your parents said you could get the new iPhone? Whatever it was for you, try to remember the way you felt at that moment. I bet you you wanted to share that good news with everybody. You probably showed off that diamond ring and let it sparkle so that people would ask you about it and you could tell them your good news. The very best news that we Christians have ever heard is that the creator of the universe, the one who rules over everything in the world, was so interested in you. He loved you so much that he sent his own son for you. Despite all the things that we have done to ruin God's creation, all the things that we continue to do, that he must watch us doing in our day-to-day life, that go contrary to his will. He loved the world so much that he sent his only son for you. That's good news. God only had one son. God, who is omniscient, knew what human beings were going to do to his son. But out of love, he sent his son anyway to save us from those times when we have rejected God, when we've chosen to go our own way. He was willing to send his son even then so that we could be rescued from death and from hell. That's good news. And the Apostle Paul tells us in our sermon text for today that this news really is so simple. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's such a simple matter. All it requires is simple faith in Jesus. Faith that Jesus has done everything for me, kept God's law perfectly on my behalf, died on the cross as punishment for every one of my sins, and even the faith that it takes to lay hold of that good news, even that faith is something that's given to me as a free gift by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works it in in my heart. But the Apostle Paul goes on 
And he asks a thought-provoking series of questions. Although that news is so simple and so sweet, how are people ever going to hear that news if we don't tell them? <coughs> But how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? How are people ever going to hear about Jesus unless someone tells them? This is one of the most puzzling parts, I think, of God's plan of salvation. That Jesus did everything for my salvation, and now he has entrusted this important part into my sinful, imperfect hands. Sometimes my limited human mind has asked the question, Jesus, why didn't you do that part yourself, too? Wouldn't people have been more likely to believe in you, Jesus, if you had gone into all the world and told everyone about what you had done? The Bible doesn't answer that question. But I wonder if we had the opportunity to ask that of Jesus in person. I wonder if he would say, but I was here on the earth for 33 years, and people got to see me and hear me, and still many of them didn't believe me. I wonder if God has entrusted this part of Jesus' mission to us because he wants that message to be passed on from person to person, from sinner to sinner, so that those who hear the message hear it from someone who is just as fickle and sinful as they are. God often chose the imperfect, chose the chief of sinners at times, to be his mouthpiece. He chose murderers like Moses to be his messenger. He chose persecutors like Paul to be his proclaimer. God has handed that task into imperfect hands like ours. Whatever God's reason is, for letting this part of the mission be handed over to us. It is a great privilege to be able to tell others about Jesus. It's a privilege to speak it publicly in churches. I've been in the public ministry for over 25 years now, and I've never lost the sense of awe that God chooses people like me to proclaim his gospel message. I grew up in a community much like yours. I grew up on my family farm in northern Wisconsin, and I can remember when I was sitting in pews just like the ones that you're sitting in, I can remember pastors preaching on questions like this. And I can remember thinking to myself, I could never do that. I could never stand up in front of large groups of people. I couldn't do public speaking. I'm kind of a shy person. I can remember thinking, I don't deserve to do something like that. I can remember thinking, I don't want the pressure of doing something like that. But one day, when I was a senior in high school, and the time was there to think about, well, what should I do as an occupation in my life? I got a mailing from our synod's college 
uh, Northwestern College, which used to be in Watertown, Wisconsin, where pastors were educated. And in that mailing was the simplest brochure I've ever seen. On the front of it was the simplest question I think I've ever heard. If not you, who? And I thought about it. If I don't tell people, then how are they going to find out about Jesus? And that simple question got me thinking about really how simple it is. You know, God doesn't call us to come up with some wonderful program for telling people about this. He doesn't call us to write a Pulitzer Prize winning novel. He doesn't call us to become some great architect who can build a stairway that reaches all the way to heaven. He doesn't call us to be astronauts so that we can figure out how to travel at the speed of light so that we and others, we can take others with us to heaven. No, he's asked us to do one of the simplest things possible, to just tell someone about what Jesus has done for them. For many of us, that simply means telling the people around us, our friends, or maybe a child or grandchild about what Jesus has done for them. But for some of us, God has given us gifts that we can explore. Maybe, kids, it means for you thinking about studying to be a pastor or a teacher someday so that you can tell people in a public way about what Jesus has done for them. Adults, too. There are more and more adult people in our world today who change their careers. And maybe for you, if a career change, a career change is on the horizon, maybe you, too, could consider studying to be a pastor or a teacher. But being public proclaimers of God's message is not for all of us. So the Apostle Paul tells us about a way that all of us can be the feet of that message, to move it and get it out there in the world. After asking that series of questions, about how can people hear about Jesus if they've never heard about him before. The Apostle Paul quotes an interesting passage from the Old Testament. He says, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Now, why would he talk about the feet of preachers? You don't tell people about Jesus with your feet, do you? Well, back in Bible times, the feet were the way in which you brought news to someone. There were no cars or airplanes, no nightly news or internet to find out what the latest news was. News always traveled on foot. If an army won a great victory, the general would send a messenger back to the home country with the good news that they had won the battle. That messenger didn't bring a message of his own. It was important that he not just give his perspective on what happened in the battle. He would receive an official message from the general that the general was to bring back to the people at home, perhaps to the king who was there in the capital city. The messenger only served as the feet of that message. All of us can be the feet of that great message about what Jesus has done for us. We do it by supporting 
the public ministers of the gospel who go out into places that we could never go. We do it when we give our offerings on Sunday morning. Part of the offering that's gathered on Sunday morning is sent to our church body, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Some of that money is used to send missionaries over to foreign countries. We have missionaries in 23 countries of the world who are supported by you. You are the feet that gets them there. Part of that offering goes to our schools where pastors and teachers are educated. Schools like Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary here in Mequon, Wisconsin. When you give your offerings, you're supporting those who teach the next generation of pastors and teachers so that the gospel can continue to go out into the world. I started this sermon by asking you a question, by asking you to think about what the best news is you have ever received. I'd like to close by asking you to think about another question. What is the part that you play in Jesus' mission? What is the part, what are the gifts that God has given you to play in the body of Christ are you maybe the mouth of the body of Christ? Do you have the gift for speaking, for explaining things to children or adults? Then maybe your role could be to be a pastor or teacher. Or are you more the hands of the body of Christ? Are you the kind of person who has the gift to reach out to others, maybe others who are hurting, to help them, to show them that Jesus is the solution to everything that hurts them? Or are you the feet? Are you the part of the body that can support the mouth, that can support the speakers, that can transport them to the place where they need to go, where there are those people who have never heard the good news about Jesus. We live in a world that needs the good news of Jesus more than anything. It's a mixed up world, isn't it? There are people who are hurting, who are hurting themselves because they don't know about Jesus, or who are hurting others. And you have the solution to their problem. You have the best news that they will ever hear. What is your role in the mission of Christ? If not you, who? Proclaim the good news of Jesus with whatever gifts he has given you. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We'll take the opportunity to confess our faith in